Hi hey guys, welcome to this two-part tutorial on creating underwater effects such as screen distortion, post-processing and water caustics. So in this first part what we're going to cover is the post-processing including the screen distortion and the bubble particles. So let's hop into it. So what I have here is just the third person example map. I've deleted all of the starter content, created a, a landscape, and I've just carved in a hole. You can do that with the landscape tool. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a post processing volume. So type in post, we get a volume. He'll blink up there because he's being awkward. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that this covers the entire area that we want our water to be in because we're not using an unbound box. So let's just get this into a nice position. It needs to be stretched a little bit further. And then go this way. There we go. Let's move him over a little bit. Mm. Yeah, okay. So while you have this selected, you'll find the post-process volume settings. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through quite a lot of these things. But we can use the search box to find the exact things that we need to use. So, to start with, we want to scene color tint. We're going 0 0.08 red, 0 0.3 green, and 0 0.4 blue. This gives us a nice greyish blue colour. Now if we float into here, you'll notice that the screen goes blue while we're w within the, the bounds of the volume. This is great, we're already getting some almost watery effects. Next, we're going to add a vignette. What a vignette does is it adds a shadowing around the outside. So if we turn this up, you'll notice that the shadow comes from the outside inwards. We want this to 0 0.72. It's quite a nice amount of shadowing. Next, we're going to mess with our bloom, because if we go within the volume, you'll notice that the sun is still just the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our bloom intensity. We're going to make this 2.68. We're going to change our threshold to 1.57 and that will do for bloom. Next we're going to add some lens flare. JJ Abrams would be proud. Now we don't want that strong because we're underwater, the, the light's getting broken down, so 0 0.58 and now we're underwater again, so we don't want a white light, we need a blue, so 0. 0 0.7, 0 0.12 on the green, and 0 0.21 on the blue. Gives us this nice dark blue lens flare. Now the bokeh, bokeh size, it's really hard to pronounce. Try it, it's like bokeh. Okay, um, we want this to be 7.4. And that changes the size of these lens flares. You see that just now? So 1, 7.4. So it spreads the light which is really nice. Next we're going to change uh, our depth of field. So method, change this to Gaussian. In our near transition region, we want 3, 2, 10. In our far, we want 20. There we are. And our near blur size, we want to turn that down to 2. We don't want it to be too blurry up close, because we want to still be able to see. But as you'll notice, far away becomes blurry. Okay, so that's it for our post process, except for one more thing. So type in blendable, and we'll get the blend radius. Now, I'll show you what this does. As you approach 
the processing volume. You have a radius that it blends with the regular scene. Now here you'll notice we're still above the water but we're getting some of the blend. We don't want that. So we need to turn this down. And 20 is a good amount. There we go. 20 is nice. So now we're going to create some distortion on the screen. So right click material screen distortion underscore M open this up and in the left under material domain change this to post process now we're going to use a texture for this I have this that I found online I'll add a link to it so that you guys can use the same one now hold you and click for a texture coordinate change these to 0.8 on both now we're going to pan of this to a coordinate we want this to go relatively so so 0 0.02 on both plug this into the texture sample now if we plug this into emissive we can see what it's doing <coughs> there we are so we're going to be using this to distort the screen but we don't want all three channels we just want two of them so drag off component mask RNG now we're going to hold S to create a scalar parameter and we're going to call this strength if it ever decided to love me there we go we're going to put this to 0.8 by default hold M and left click for a multiply multiply the mask by the strength now we want to make sure we have no distortion around the edge of the screen um, because we're only using 0 0.8 um, and if we did this and, and had this as our default into the post processing volume then 0.2 of the screen would be stretched because we're losing 20% of the screen space so we're going to add a regular texture coordinate to this just leave that at default to, um, 1 at 1 now we need a scene texture and on the left here under scene texture ID change this to post process input 0 put the add into the UVs and put the color into the emissive you'll have nothing in your example that's fine we'll apply this and save now back in our post process volume search for blendables and here under blendables you'll have array add an element click the drop down asset reference choose the screen distortion and put it in now if we go in there oh my yes now this is a bit over the top so Which one of my numbers have I done wrong? This one. Okay. That's because of the strength. So I'll show this to you in real time. So if we turn this down to 0.6, you'll notice that we get less distortion. Now it's up to you what you want. I mean, you don't want an insane amount of distortion because it's silly. In my example, I was using 0 0.08. I missed out a zero. Because I'm, a, I'm just silly. So there we have like a nice wavy effect now on the screen. So that's our post processing volume and blendables done. Now we're going to make our bubbles. So I'm using Photoshop. This is a 128 by 128 square that I filled in black. I'm going to add a new layer. We're just using black and white for this. We're going to get a hard edged brush make it just big enough to fill the area and we're just going to click next I'll change to black grab a soft edge brush make sure that it's a bit smaller in size and I'll just pick an area and I'm just going to click a few times to create a bubble there we are save as target put it in where I need it 
here. And we'll go back to our folder. Is it going to love me? It's not going to love me. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Love me. There we go. It's because I had one of the same name earlier and I deleted it. Um, I had to re import it manually. Right click, material, bubbles underscore n. Open it up, drag our bubble inside. Change to a translucent unlit material. Now we're going to want to control our color, so particle color node. Hold M and click twice for two multiplies. The top pin of color into the top multiply, then the texture sample into the bottom. The alpha of particle color, and we can still just use the top as we're only using a black and white image, into the bottom of the bottom multiply. And emissive and opacity. And now we have a a bubble. So we'll apply that and save. Now we will create a particle system. Bubbles underscore P. In required, change this to our bubbles. Right click, type data, GPU sprites. We're going to leave the bounding box for now, we don't need to mess with that. Spawn, we're going to create 50 of these. Lifetime we want a minimum of 5 and a maximum of 15 so we get some that die earlier than others the size we're going to try we're going to go with maybe 10 maximum and a 5 minimum their initial velocity is a bit quick so we're going to turn down the Z to 25 and the minimum Z to 10 so now they spray a little bit slower, which is really nice. Their color of a life, we are going to change their out value to black. So now you'll notice that they fade out. So we're not we're not popping them, but they're not just disappearing. They're going to slowly fade out, which is quite nice. Now we'll add a location initial location seed. We're going to make these 300, 300, 0, minus 300, minus 300, 0. So now we have a 600 unit radius for them to spawn in. Now we're going to add a size, size by life. In our initial point, we're going to change the y value to 1.8, and you'll notice now they spawn stretched. And then in their second point, which is labeled 1, because we always start at 0. We're going to change the in value to 0 0.3 and leave the values at default. So now you'll notice that they spawn stretched and very quickly go back to normal. So they start elliptical and then they become circular. Next, just to add a bit of movement, we're going to add an orbit. And we're going to change the maximum x and maximum y to 10 and leave everything else at 0. Maybe 10 might be a bit high. We'll see. Um, now, these won't be very visible. Let's see. <coughs> Place them into our little volume area. And you can already see that you you can't make them out. Now, it's because this is quite a dark area, and these are quite... You can just about see them. So we're darkening the area, but these are just default non-lit bubbles so what we need to do is we need to make sure that they are emitting so in color of a life in the initial value we're going to brighten this up so we're going to change everything to 15 they look nice change everything to 15 um, and then we'll have these bright white bubbles which is fine now we can see them nice just going to move the emitter down because you can tell they're spawning in midair. And there we have it, we have some bubbles. Probably too many bubbles. We'll change this down to 25. 25 seems like a decent amount of bubbles. Yeah, 
There we are. I'm just going to sit here, make sure these don't go above our, our volume. If you find that they're coming above your volume, just turn their life down a little bit. There we are. I'm getting a couple that are coming above, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in their lifetime. I'm just going to drop the lifetime down by two seconds. So they have a maximum of 13. So that concludes part one. Um, in part two, we're going to cover the caustics material that you can see here, which is this nice effect on the floor, um, which is the light refracting through the the water plane that I haven't got in. Um, but you'll notice that we have multiple layers here. We've got a white, and then you can see the red, green, and blue layer, like a prism, um, breaking the light down. Um, we're going to cover that in the second part. It's going to be a bit more complicated and probably take a little bit longer, um, but I hope this has been helpful so far, and I'll see you in the next one.